Welcome back. You are still watching Morning Live. A rare blood wolf moon eclipse will be seen in the skies across many parts of the world and in South Africa tonight. The phenomenon where the moon will appear reddish and closer to Earth will last for close to three and a half hours. Sky gazers are said to be treated to a total astrophysical eclipse this evening. And here to share more on the lunar event, we're joined by meteorologist Sipesile Kunene, who We've been arguing off air a little bit about this red wolf moon. But yes. we're about to find out what it is. Thanks for coming. Um, what is the blood wolf moon? What is it? Okay. Blood wolf moon, as uh, you can hear, there's blood, there's wolf, there's moon. But I'm going to explain why there isn't really the wolf part. The wolf part is just for spice. But can I ask you one question? Yeah. Can I ask you one question? Because this is, it's, it's about this thing. If a tree falls in the woods or in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> I think so. You think so? <laughs> Does it make a sound or not? If it falls in the forest, no one is there to hear it make a... No one is there to hear I it I imagine it does. You imagine it does. Yes. Okay, this is the same thing that's happening today. This thing is going to happen today. Uh, actually, it's going to start tonight, but we'll be able to see it here in Southern Africa tomorrow in the morning. But the people who will be mostly privileged to see it are uh, mostly people in America and other parts of the world. But here in Africa and most of India and Australia, we won't see anything. Because by the time it actually happens, the moon will have set and this uh, earth will have turned around and the sun is up and so therefore we won't see it, but it's happening. So it's the same thing with the tree. If it falls in the woods and no one is there to hear it. It's almost as if it, it didn't fall at all. Exactly. That's such an anti-climax. <laughs> anyway, what causes this blood wolf moon this and what is its relevance in our world or okay. in the world up there in the sky? Okay, this one is actually called a super blood wolf moon. The super part mainly because it will be bigger than the normal moon. But it doesn't mean that the moon has grown in size over the past 29 days. No, it didn't grow, but it is actually closer to Earth. So it looks like it is bigger. It's not really big. So closer to Earth, how was it calculated? How are we able to determine that it's closer to Earth and how closer? A very good question. Mo uh, the moon, as it rotates around, this, uh, around the Earth, it doesn't rotate in a perfect circle, so it rotates in an orbit. So just like the egg, you, you, you've seen the shape of an egg. It's got parts where it's longer and then parts where it's shorter. So as the moon rotates, it sort of takes that orbit. There's parts where it's very far away from us, so it looks very small because it's far away. But then there's a part where, right now where it is, where it's actually close to Earth, and we can see it as big. That's what we see. We think it's actually bigger. It has grown in size, but it's not big. It's just closer to Earth. And the red part, the red part is the most interesting part. Red part is actually scattering of light. It's something that our atmosphere does. All atmospheres do that, but ours does it differently. It's the same reason why our sky is blue, because when the, sun, when the light from the sun enters our atmosphere, it gets, there's something that happens. In Ashwang, it's a nitrogen, oxygen, which are in our atmosphere, so there's an interaction. But then, after that interaction, it scatters. Light scatters. Oh. It scatters in different directions. And according to the wavelengths, it scatters differently. So blue will be scattered different from the red because of the wavelength. Blue is on the other side of the visible spectrum and it has shorter wavelengths. And then, of course, uh, a red or uh, reddish, yellowish and all the, those colors, those colors of the rainbow, they are on the longer side of the wavelength. They have longer wavelengths, so they are scattered differently. And it all has to do with what, the way that our atmosphere does it. A different atmosphere will do something different. An atmosphere with different chemical compositions will definitely scatter light differently. So it's just that ours scatters it in this way and we have a, a red blood moon. And uh, something else, why the main reason why it's red is because as it scatters it around the earth, it actually, it, it, it concentrates all the red light into one spot. And that's All what right. it's called. And, and I really want to see what you're talking about. Do you have pictures for me? <laughs> <laughs> because I think, of course, you know, all these you terms, is this what you were explaining about the light? So this is what I was light. explaining. Exactly, yes. So you find our sun over there. I don't think you can see my green yes. lights. But as, it, of course, there's the moon. Do you see that part? It's, it says penumbra and yes. penumbra then. So the penumbra is just before the moon enters that red light. So... I don't know if I can stand and show you what I'm talking about here. Let me, let me stand. I like pointing at things, you know. <laughs> so the light from the sun, eh? you get light coming from that side. It's going in this direction. And of course, as it goes in this direction, when it comes to the atmosphere, the atmosphere is very, very thin. 
relative to the size of the Earth. It's very, very thin. So as it scatters through the atmosphere, it comes one side and then the blue will go this one way. And then it actually does the inverse. So it comes as one, but you see white light. But as it separates, as it exits the Earth, after being scattered, after interacting with the atmosphere, it changes now. The red goes on the, on the one side and the blue goes on the other side. So it scatters in all directions and it does it at the top. So you find that all the reds are focused into one part. That's why the moon okay. will be red. <laughs> that makes much more sense to me. And so you mentioned that in South Africa, we won't really get to see it. But how long does it last um, for those who will be experiencing it? It lasts something between five minutes to about an hour. And so you'll see it first darkening. You'll see it just looks like it's disappearing all of a sudden. And then after darkening, it turns into that uh, shade of red. That's when it moves. You see now it's turning red. Yes. That's when it's moving into that area where it's actually all the red light is focused in one spot. And, and is it safe for people to look at it with the naked eye? Because this one is a lunar eclipse, yes, it is safe. Solar right. eclipse is a different case and it's not safe to look at it with your naked eye. All right, and very quickly, how often does it occur? So this one, what's happening is that, uh, okay, this is not the one that we're looking at. It occurs very seldom. So this year we're going to see it, of course, uh, the next one we'll be seeing in July, 16 and 17 July. It will be a partial one. Luckily, here in South Africa, we'll be able to see it. And the only thing that will stop you from seeing it is just cloudy weather. If it's partly cloudy, you won't see it. So on the 16th and 17th of July, watch the weather forecast and see <laughs> what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. Super Sihle, thank you very much. Uh, the year 2019 begins with some cosmic theater with a super blood moon eclipse set to take center stage for large parts of of the world around uh, January 20th and 21st. And we just spoke to meteorologist Sipesi Legonene who gave us more details on the eclipse. It's time for us to go back to the main desk. Simpio, I believe there are some social media responses uh, from our viewers so far in the show.